Hello again from 538's makeshift newsroom this evening. We are starting to get more results in. And in fact, as we speak, we have around 80% of the expected vote in from Florida. And it's not looking great for Biden. Trump has been overperforming where he was in, for example, Miami-Dade County in 2016. And so to talk a little bit about what we're seeing and uh, what kind of demographic trends might be behind Trump's performance in Florida is my colleague, Claire Malone. Hey, Claire, how's it going? Good, Galen. Happy election evening. What are we seeing in Florida as the results come in? Yeah, basically what we're seeing are some poor, uh, a poor showing by Biden so far with Latino voters. Now, I should say here, Biden is performing poorly right now in Miami-Dade with those voters and in a couple other counties, he's not doing quite as well with Latino voters. I think what we should note here is that Latino voters in Florida in particular tend to be more conservative than Latinos around the, around the country. Uh, there's a large Cuban vote. They tend to be more conservative. And uh, Trump's message, I think, about socialism and linking the Democratic Party to the dangers of socialism really resonates with the Cuban community, obviously, because of uh, the regime in Cuba that so many uh, people there feel, feel so tied to and so... Uh, it's tied to a struggle against the regime. So um, it's certainly not great news for Biden early on. Was this at all expected? I mean, did we see hints of Biden doing poorly with Latinos or particularly Latinos in Florida throughout the campaign? Um, or is this coming in as somewhat as a, of a surprise this evening? You know, we did see some reporting that said that Democratic officials in those parts of Florida were concerned about the campaign outreach to Latino voters. I think a lot of things have been thrown into, you know, a bit of chaos because of the COVID-19 pandemic. The very nature of campaigning is very different this time around. And also President Trump, you know, does have, uh, was making a very specific targeted appeal. As we all know, he moved to Florida. So he is now officially a Florida man and a Florida resident. And there's a certain resonance that's carried there. Um, but yeah, there were some signs, you know, starting a few days ago where people uh, in the Democratic Party were raising some alarm bells. I mean, I think that even going back to 2016, a lot of elections watchers or analysts assume that because of President Trump's rhetoric surrounding immigration or immigrants, um, or the Latino community specifically, particularly Mexican immigrants, that, you know, he would probably do worse uh, than maybe even Romney did. And that didn't happen in 2016. So if he does even better amongst Latinos in 2020, I mean, what, what does that tell us? Now, of course, as you mentioned, the Latino community in Florida is different from the rest of the country. We're going to have to wait and see. But I mean, even even just this so far, like what what can we tell um, about how campaigns work and how appeals work to different kinds of voters? Sure. I mean, you know, on the one hand, it could mean that Trump is getting good at targeting his message to certain kinds of Latino voters. Right. So uh, as we said, the Cuban-American community, which is very conservative, that message about socialism plays pretty well. I'd also be interested to see, you know, we don't have data yet on this, but I think there's also, you know, there tends to be sometimes a gender gap between people, you know, you know, people of the same race, right? So uh, white men and white women or Latino men and Latino women, we see men favor Trump a lot more than women do in general. And I would think that potentially Trump could have made, made gains among uh, Latino men, black men, over the past four years or during this campaign, um, you know, a lot of people like the president's uh, non-politically correct style. And so, you know, there could be a, a unique appeal that Trump has to some of those voters. All right. So really what we're talking about here is Florida, because we haven't gotten a lot of results in from other states around the country yet. So we really we are going to hold our horses and we obviously won't jump to any conclusions. Florida is a state that Trump definitely needs to win, but it's not a state that Biden would need to win in order to you know, win election tonight. Um, but can you give us some sense of how important Florida is apart from that um, as we as we get more results in tonight? 
I think Florida looms large in the national imagination, first and foremost, we should say. Uh, people certainly remember the 2000 election count there, so I think Democrats have a lot of emotional <laughs> ties to Florida. Um, it also comes early on in, in the counting on election night, so Florida is very fast about getting votes in. So, you know, I think there is a certain amount of this is the first state, the first big state that we're hearing about. And we should say Florida has a big old trove of electoral college votes. So um, it's a certainly a prize for both campaigns. I think Biden still does have a path forward, even without Florida. Um, but it's certainly a state that, you know, both campaigns have been fighting for, but the margin was certainly uh, very close in the polls there. And we should mention, of course, that on election night in 2018, we got early results from Florida. Republicans outperformed their polls there. Democrats started wondering if the polls showing right. them doing well nationally in the, in the House vote would be off. It turned out that while polls were off, notably around four points uh, for the governor's race, for example, in Florida, the polls elsewhere weren't really off. So so it could be that pollsters have a difficult time polling Florida. And what happens in Florida may not be indicative of what happens in the rest of the country. Right. Florida is a unique state. Uh, so we will have to stay tuned. But certainly uh, some interesting stuff coming out here early in the night. All right, well, I will let you get back to the live blog. I will as well, but let's check in before too long. Ping us as soon as you have uh, something else to talk about. Sounds good. Thanks, Galen. Catch you later.